Hello, hello, friends. This is Wendy with Love and Stampin'. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, I am using my new technology, which is a microphone. <laughs> um, but I'm always a little insecure about if it's working or not. So just chat in and let me know that it's working. So as I said, this is Wendy with Love and Stampin'. I am excited that you're here with me today because we're going to make a super, super cute card. And it is currently pouring rain outside uh, here in Northern California. Today is March 21st, 2023, and we're going to make a twist pop-up panel card. Um, this card I've seen all over the interwebs. And I've made versions of this before, but this one's a little bit different. So we are just going to get busy and make this. So a few things before we get started. Um, first, I just want to remind you that if you want to get this calendar from me in the mail free every month, then you need to sign up for my email list. There is a link below this video that says get my emails. And um, in that link, you just click it and then you sign up for emails and then you're good to go. Um, you just have to go to your email and make sure you subscribe all the way. Can you guys hear me okay? I just want to make sure before I move too much further because I don't see anybody in the chat saying they can hear me. <laughs> okay, yes. Francis said yes. Okay. So... Um, anyway, we're going to make this card. This calendar comes out on the 28th of every month. So next week, next Tuesday, I'm going to email out April's calendar. So you're going to want to make sure you're subscribed before then. So you get it in your email. Also, when you subscribe to my email, you can get the last three months of calendars. It'll take you to a screen that gives you that. Okay. All right. So I have one more thing to share with you because I want to say this really quick before we get started because then I always forget. Colors, 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 colors. Big news with Stampin' Up! is they're doing a color refresh. This means they're going to go through all of the colors in Stampin' Up! and they're going to go through and refresh them. They're going to kind of decide what's on trend, what's not on trend, what's not selling anymore, and they will retire them. So it is pot. These are the so every year, Stampin' Up! has five colors that retire and five colors that come in new. Those are called in colors. This year, these are the five that are set to retire. However, it is always possible that one or more of these colors will get put in to our new color refresh. So I can't say to you for sure with, that, with absolute certainty that these are all retiring. I don't know. They might get wrapped into a color refresh. But what I will tell you is they possibly could all retire. So on March 29th, demonstrators are going to get to see the catalog. Demonstrators are going to know at that point what's retiring, what's coming back, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you want any of these colors, the ink refills, the card stocks, or the inks, I would purchase them now, like today. Because what's going to happen is Stampin' Up's going to release that list. And when that list gets released, all heck is going to break loose. Things are going to sell out. It happens every year. And every year I get a minimum of five emails that say, I missed this. Do you have this? I missed that. Do you have this? So if there's anything in the annual catalog, anything like inks, um, papers that you just desperately want, get them now before March 29th because it's going to get ugly, friends. It's going to get ugly. Okay. So I just want to share that with you. <laughs> um, same with stamp sets like this one that I'm using today. Super cute. No idea if it's going to be in the new catalog or not. So I'm using this today because I think it's adorable and it works perfect for the project we're doing. And I have a free project sheet for you over on my blog. So when we're done here, you can hop over to my blog and pick this free project sheet up. Now, if you want the full PDF tutorial for all of the March cards, including next week's, you can place a $50 online order with me using that special host code that's linked below. It starts with the letter P like Paul. And you're going to get card kits, 
and a PDF. So you don't need to print the project sheet. Okay, so that's my YouTube live card class is what we're calling it. All right, so let's get busy. We're going to make, you guys want to see the card first? Do you want to see this first? Um, let's go ahead and show it to you really quick. So here's the card. Wah! Is that not the cutest? Look at all those little horses. So in my head, these little horses were in a stable or in a pasture, and they're all like looking over the fence waiting to be fed. So we're going to talk about that a little bit uh, as we make this card. So you're going to get all the bits and pieces in your card kit when you purchase your $50 order, and you're going to be able to make your card. Okay, so here's what we're going to start with. We're going to set all of this hullabaloo aside, and I've made a couple of things for you. Now, photos of these will be in the PDF. They're not on my website, but they will be in the PDF. Um, and it's just scoring diagrams, how to score everything and plan everything, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our piece of four and a quarter by 11 inch cardstock. And I've got to score it at five and a half. We're going to set that aside. Then I have a piece. I cannot remember what this is cut at. Well, let's just look at the cheat sheet, shall we? This is three and three quarters by 11. And we are going to score it at two and three quarters, five and a half. and eight and a quarter, <clears throat> all on the landscape side. And then we've got one more. This piece is cut at three by eight, and we are gonna score this piece in half, basically. So we're gonna score at four inches, we're gonna turn it and score at one and a half. So now this is in half both directions. And then while I've got this out, we're going to mark the top and the bottom. You know what's even easier to use? We're going to use my easier method. What's even easier to use is my T-square ruler. So people ask, well, what do you use a T-square ruler for? This is a perfect example. So I need to mark the top on the landscape side at two and a half. Wait, did I do that right? Yes. And five and a half. And then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to repeat exactly the same thing on this side. Two and a half. Five and a half. Okay. Then let me grab. Oh, where is it at? I should have had it out. Um... Where is my little piercing mat? I know I have one. In fact, I know I have more than one. But I'm not sure where I've put it. You know what? Let's just try our silicone mat. Oh, here it is. Ha! It was right next to my hand. Okay. So I got this little pier piercing mat. And I'm going to take my T-square ruler. You don't have to use a T-square. You can use anything. And I'm going to score from point to point across this midsection. Okay? So you want to make sure that your points line up and that you're crossing this little part in the middle where you scored. Okay? So we're lining everything up. And then we're scoring. And if you don't have a stylus, you could use a bone folder. And then we're lining things up. And we're scoring. All right. Now, the next step is to fold this little mister. So now I have to remember how to fold it. See, this is what happens when you create in advance. This is what happens. Okay. So we're going to fold in. Now I remember. We're going to fold on the diagonal 
on both sides, okay? Because we want these two triangles to be flat. So we're going to push in. I didn't get my score line very good on this one. Okay. So we're going to push in. Like so. And same on this side. Like so. And then so it's going to go down and over. Okay. So you see how you just have to kind of finagle until you get it to do what you want it to do. And then I'm going to score or burnish, excuse me, these edges to make a nice flat solid seal like so like that. Okay. Now let's do our next part. We have our outside of our card and we are going to adhere this piece into the center of this card. Okay, so now if you want to get real technical, you could measure and make a mark and do it that way. I don't do that. That's not windy. So we're going to eyeball it. And we're going to just add adhesive on each side. You could use tear and tape, whatever suits you. It does look like a paper airplane, Miss Deborah. You're right. Okay, and then we're just going to center it up, close the top, and now we have our pop-out mechanism. So in order to just kind of hold this together, I'm just going to put an uh, ink pad on top. And then we've got this piece here that's going to do, here's how it folds, okay? So it's a valley peak valley, but we're going to decorate it before we go too far. Because, personally, I think it's easier than trying to put it together in the card. So we're just going to use our glue here. Now, all of these layer pieces are, um, this is cherry cobbler cardstock. Now, let's just talk about the retiring colors for just a second. We don't know what they are yet. But I have a few colors in my head that I just think to myself, if they retire this color, I'm going to need a day in bed because <laughs> I love, I love certain colors. So for one of my colors, and I would love to hear yours, tell me your color that you're like scared that they're going to retire. One of mine is crumb cake. I love crumb cake cardstock. Um, it is just such a good, neutral, basic color. And I love it. Another one of mine is Coastal Cabana. I love Coastal Cabana. Uh, so beautiful. And, you know, I used to love Melon Mambo. And I still do love Melon Mambo, but I'm okay with it going away at this point. Um, but they need to replace it with some other beautiful pink. Like if we could keep polished pink. And, and let go of Melon Mambo, I'd be okay with that. But um, anyway, so what colors or color, color or colors for you, are you just like, I don't know how I could live without that color. It's like your go-to color that you pull from. Um, yeah, brights. For me, the anything in the brights collection Truthfully, as long as they replace it with a comparable color, I'm okay with it. But like Coastal Cabana, I don't know. That one's a hard replacement for me. I just think it's so beautiful. And um, I just don't see, I can't think of another color that would replace that well. Um, they could get rid of Pool Party. Uh, frankly, I'm kind of over Pool Party. I feel like it is 
it almost kind of has a dingy look. Have you ever noticed that? Like kind of a little bit? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. All right, let's do some stamping, friends. You know what? Let's decorate the front of this card just real quick and get that done because that is like super easy. Um, so when I make a card that is really complex on the inside, like this one, like it's got, you know, a pop out and we're about to do, we're about to really exercise Wendy's coloring skills and all of that. So when we do something like that, or when I do, I should say, I tend to then keep the outside very simplistic. Um, that's just me. You know, you could decorate the front of this up as much as you wanted it want to. I just tend to keep things very simple and basic when... Um, when I'm doing something really elaborate on the inside and vice versa. Like if I put a lot of effort in a, and make something really elaborate on the outside, then I'm going to keep it really simplistic on the inside. I do want to mention for my friends that are across the pond or that maybe um, are demonstrators and you want my PDFs for all of my YouTube lives, the, the written out beautiful PDF with extra photos and all of that. Um, you can subscribe to the creative vault because I will upload all of those there. Um, so that is an option as well, just so you know. Okay. We're going to do the hello there sentiment. Just, again, like I said, keeping it super simple. Okay. And then put that aside. And going to do our stamping. Oh! I totally forgot you guys. So do what I say, not what I do on the inside of this card. I layered it with designer series paper. This one is not going to have that. It's okay. It's okay. No big deal. But I'm just saying you want to do that. You'll want to do that. All right, let's get to stamping. So we're going to stamp. Um, and I am trying out hero arts intense intensified black ink. Frankly, at this point, I'm not seeing a huge difference between it and Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. So take that for what it's worth. We'll see. Maybe, maybe there's going to be a big difference, but so far I'm not, I'm not seeing it. All right. And you know, I'm always honest with y'all. So we're stamping this little rock pattern on all of these first. And I am not going to color all of these today. I'm just going to color one for you just because it's a long process. You'll see once we get going. Um, we have our little horse here. Now I'm, I debated coloring, doing this one with all the different farm animals or keeping it with horses. And I'm going to keep it with horses only because I'm going to tell you why I'm going to use both of these cards. I'm going to give these cards to my daughter's trainers. So it wouldn't make sense for me to um, stamp like pigs and stuff because my daughter goes to a horse trainer. So, um, so the thing I will say that I like about this is it uses, you can use alcohol markers and it's waterproof. So you can also use watercolors with it where memento, you can't use watercolors. Well, you can, but it will smear. So, you know, that's one benefit that it has. Excuse me while I take a sip of water. Okay. Let me grab my chair. Cause I got to sit down to color. I can't stand up and color. I don't know why it just, there's something it's like counterintuitive. Also today we're going to talk about something kind of fun. 
um, we are going to combine Stampin' Blends. The main thing I want to show you how to color are these rock, this rock wall. So we might color it twice, okay, so that you can see two, two options. So we're going to use, in combo with these, we're going to use Copic markers, C1, C3, C7, plus our Stampin' Blends. So truthfully, you could probably get away without using C3, I think. So you could get C1 and C7 to finish off and have more range with your smoky slate. Now I want to say that this obviously is not use at your own risk because these haven't been tested together. However, I've used them together and they're fine. But I think from a responsibility standpoint, I just need to say that using different alcohol markers together, technically, I don't know if they could mess your markers up. I have no idea. I'm not worried about it. I don't think it will. But I just want to put that disclaimer out there so that you don't want to hurt me um, if something goes wrong. Okay. So we're going to start with the C1 Copic marker and I'm actually just going to cover like everything with this. Ooh, this is smearing. <gasps> okay. This is my first time using hero arts ink with Copic markers or alcohol markers and it's smearing. So right away, I don't like that. Sorry, Hero Arts, not a fan of that. Now I'm wondering if I should restamp all of this or if it's a drying issue. Maybe it needs to sit a little bit longer. Okay, you don't have that issue with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. I can stamp and start coloring immediately. So that's why I'm doing these experiments, guys, because I want, I want us to know, right? Okay, let's use the bullet tip. So here we're using our Smoky Slate Light. And I'm going to go in and I'm adding color to the bottom of each rock, leaving the top lighter. I don't know what you want to call it, a rock, a stone, whatever. Okay. So this is the smoky slate light and you can see how nicely it works with the C1. And then we've got Smoky Slake Dark. And we're going to go in and lay some of this down. Not quite as deep or far as the uh, Smoky Slate Light. And now you see why I'm not going to color all of these with you because we would be here all day. I mean, it took me hours to, well, not hours. It took me probably start to finish to make the other card that I showed you. It probably took an hour and a half coloring it all. Okay, so now what I'm going to say about this is in this particular card, the smearing isn't going to be an issue because of what I'm going to do. However, if I was coloring pastel flowers, the smearing would be an issue. So I'm going back in now with my light. No, I'm not. I'm changing my mind. I'm going to use my C7 and I'm going to take C7 and I'm just going to dot in the bottom area here of each of these rocks. Wendy, why are you making little dots in the bottom of the rocks? You're going to see it'll come together. It just gives the rocks a little more texture. And you could use probably like um, a black. If you don't have Copic markers, um, you could use the light 
Stampin' Blends black and do this, but it will be much harsher. Uh, this is a gray. The C markers in Copics are cool color markers. Cool grays, I should say. So they fall in line with our smoky slate well. Okay, now I'm going to go back with my smoky slate light, which the nib, the brush nib on this one is failing. And I'm going to go even further out. And we're just blending all the way from the bottom. We're blending out the darkness of those little dots okay so they're there creating a shadow but they are not Let's see how i explain this they're there creating a shadow but they're not like a harsh line overwhelming and they're adding a little bit of texture because they are little dots so i'm just using a flicking motion going upwards to blend and then I'm going to come in with my C1 and I'm going to flick backwards into just to get rid of any harsh lines. And then you're going to see what I'm going to do to really bring this all together. That just kind of gives it the finished look. It's so beautiful. Okay. Then we're going to take our C7. And we're going to go all around all of these rocks. Now, this little panel in particular, you may notice I did not put a horse on. There's a reason. This is my writing panel. Writing, not riding. <laughs> so this gives me a panel to be able to write my message on on the inside of the card. And that's why I left it blank. So you could fill them all up and choose to write your little message on the bottom part of the card on the inside or whatever. But I just wanted a little space left blank so that when you open it and the pop-up comes out, there is a spot to put a message right where all the horses are. So um, some of you have asked while I'm coloring, some of you have asked uh, an update. You want an update with the Mustang. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll have to go back and watch some other videos. But basically my daughter is helping train a wild Mustang. And it is going very well. She is, she is so my husband's child. Um, she's so confident and calm. Thank the Lord. Uh, not her mother, not like me. I tend to struggle with confidence and particularly with horses. Um, and a lot of, you know, my backstory, if you're new here, you don't know that, but I did break my back off of a horse in 2007 so I lack confidence and with horses. And so she's just super confident and happy go lucky with all of it. And I think that that is wonderful and magical. So we're going to use pool party. Remember I was just bad mouthing pool party. We're going to use pool party on this to just make a beautiful little sky green background here. My other card, I did not use pool party. I used a Copic marker for my background, but that's very beautiful, right? So that is how you color the rocks. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go around every single one of these horses and color the backgrounds while we just continue to have our chat. So if you are new here and you're not familiar with how my channel works, we are all friends. So we hang out. You can be part of our friend group. We don't exclude anybody. 
we're all inclusive here. Um, but the reason I'm saying that is because we have chit chat time and we got a handful of folks out there that just don't like that. And that means my channel is not for you. So it's okay if you don't like chit chat time. Um, but, but we do that here at love and stampin with miss Wendy. We do that here. So anyway, back to the Mustang. Um, yeah, his name is Artie. Uh, I think I've already shared that. I know I already shared that, but I'm just reiterating. His name is Artie and he's a very sweet boy. Um, and it's going well. If you guys have specific questions you want to ask, I don't really know what to tell you about it other than it's going well. So if you have specific questions for me, uh, you can drop them in the comments and I will certainly answer them. And we're just going to keep coloring. As long as you have comments coming in and interacting with me, I'm going to keep answering and chatting with you. Okay. So it's up to you how long we hang out today. How about that? So let me take a super quick peek through the comments here just to see. Oh, baked brown sugar. That was a beautiful color. Uh, cinnamon cider was one of my favorites too. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm looking through the chat. Crumb cake is a favorite for Shawnee as well. Granny apple green. Yes, I feel the same way, um, Bev. I use granny apple green all the time. Um, Renee loves real red, Bermuda Bay, crumb cake, daffodil. Yep. Early espresso and Cajun craze, gorgeous grape. I know. Look at all the colors. Let's not hope. I mean, let's hope that all of these don't go away. Bev says she loves the vault. Thank you, Bev. It is a good place to be. And you can get 50% off your first month when you use the code vault. There is a link below the video to sign up. I like versifying Claire Black. Okay. Uh, I'll take that a note of that. Your nails match your shirt. <laughs> Beautiful coloring. I love chit chat. Love chit chat and knowing what you're doing. I love cinnamon cider too. Yeah. Cinnamon cider was one of my faves. Um, it was hard for me to let that one go. It was just such a good, yummy brown. And so I would not be sad if that came back. Like that could come back and, and replace soft suede. I would be okay with that. Um, I don't know. I've often wished that they would expand their color collections, like, and have more colors per fam color family. Um, but you know, who knows if that'll ever happen or not. That's just my wishes. All right, let's color a horse. In fact, we could color, um, let's see, we'll color this one. This one probably looks the most like Artie. Um, Artie, it, we can't totally tell what his color is yet because, um, he, he's dirty. <laughs> I mean, there's just no other way to say it. He's filthy. So he's covered in mud and mud clods and it's not like you can just wash him, right? He's a wild horse. So, um, he's, you can't just like take a hose to him and plus it's too cold. So that's the other thing. I need a scrap piece of paper guys. Hold on. In getting reintroduced to my Copic markers, I have, I, I'm really, really dependent on swatching my colors before I use them. So this is E09. So uh, I have to swatch before I use them because if I don't, then I get myself into a predicament. So I think we'll use that one. What's this one like? I need like a mid-tone. So we've got five. 
Sorry, I'm just going to talk to myself. Don't mind me. Okay, let's see. So then what I do, so this is how I'm swatching. So I've got E09. E39 and E59. How are we feeling about these? Those are not the colors I used before. I can tell you that. What about E19? That almost looks the same as E09, doesn't it? Yeah, not much difference there. So have I ever told you guys that how I ended up with my collection of Copics? I probably haven't. I actually, they came two ways. One, I did buy some of them. Um, definitely purchased some of them. But I also came to them through luck. Um well, I hate to say luck because this is going to sound horrible now when I tell you how, but somebody passed away and someone reached out to me, a, a fellow card maker passed away and someone, I'm going to go a different direction. And someone reached out to me and was like, we have all of these Copic markers. Would you like, would you like them? And I was gifted. Like I would say 70. Oh, this one's dead. Yep, dead as. Okay, so we are going to put that one aside. Okay. Grr. I wonder what I use. See, this is why you need to always swatch all the things, I guess, right? Uh, we'll try this E15, E19, and E18. We're just going to go for it. This is E15. All right. So with Copics, we color lightest to darkest and then darkest to lightest. Or at least that's what Wendy does. You can do whatever you want to do. But that's what I find with Copics. So I want to make note really quick that none of the colors at this point, I mean, the ink is no longer smearing. So I guess with this ink, you just have to let it sit for a second because it's not smearing at all now. Um, but I don't love that because for me, I do have a habit of just getting busy, getting going. So there's E18. So now, so E15 is what we used first and now we're going to use E18. And uh, recently, let's talk about a few other things. Well, first, let me see if you guys have any questions about Artie. Let's see. Okay. It would not upset me if Blushing Bride retired. Same. And Petal Pink. They can both go. I don't like either one of them. Uh. I hope any color they introduce have blends also. Mango Melody and Coastal. I know. Girl, I hear you loud and clear, Francis. Is the screen frozen for anyone? Yes, frozen. Oh, no. Is that, is it fixed? I think I'm running out of battery. I think it froze you because I'm running out of battery. Um... Okay, fixed. So, um, so anyway, yeah. So I did recently have somebody reach out and, um, I am coming, going to be coming under fire and have been for using products outside of Stampin' Up. Um, I'm not going anywhere guys. So we're friends here. We're going to talk openly and honestly, and that's what I'm going to continue to do because that's always who I've been. Um, but what I'm doing right now is a perfect example. So I, I don't have 
stamp and blend markers that will achieve this color. I, there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> so I'm using an alternative. Um, and I am starting to catch a little flack from, uh, no customers. I actually, customers are thrilled that I'm, I'm using some other things here and there branching out. Um, but I'm, I'm catching some flack from other demonstrators about using product outside of the Stampin' Up! world. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to bash that. I understand why they're saying it. Um, but at the same time, I'm going to follow my heart. I'm, I'm going to be true to who I am. And so that is all to say, if you're watching this and you're a new person to my channel and you're a demonstrator and you're like freaking out because I'm using Copic markers, um, or another black ink, then I may not be the channel for you to watch. So I'm giving that disclaimer as a gift to my fellow demonstrator friends, because I just want you to understand um, that it's not going to change. I'm not going to change what I'm doing because of naysayers. Ha <laughs> ha, naysayers, nay. Anyways, so um, I just want to put that out there and be really transparent about it. Now, um, let's talk about his forelock. The hair on the front of a horse's head is called the forelock. And the hair on their neck is called their mane. Education on horses. Who knew you were going to get that, right? So we're going to color his floor forelock black. But we're going to do it with grays. I know. Weird, right? So I'm using a C1 and a C3. This is C3 that I'm using. And then we're going to come in with C7, which is feels almost black, but it's gray. And we're leaving a highlight in the middle of his forelock. Now, his little mane down here is so tiny, it's really hard to do any shading. So we're just not going to worry about it a whole lot. And then we're going to come in with a C9, which is even darker still. Tracing. Um, now, let's talk Copics versus blends. Because one of the things that... You know, I've had people ask is like, why? What's the point of using Copics versus, you know, blends, blah, blah, blah. That's, a, you know, this and that, same product, da, 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 da. It's not. These are apples and oranges products. I've gone over this lots of times, but we're going to go over it one more time for those in the back. Um, Copic markers are a professional grade marker that are used by illustrators and artists. Somewhere along the way, card makers, <clears throat> who are also artists, I will say, somewhere along the way, uh, card makers picked up using Copics for coloring their images, okay? Um, they are a complicated set of product to use. They are not easy to use. They are not cut and dry. Um, there are lots and lots and lots. This is just a black. This is just black marker. And I'm just grabbing the Copic because it's sitting next to me. You could totally use a black stamp and blends. It's the same thing. Okay. So we are comparing apples and oranges when we try to compare a stamp and blend to a Copic. Stamp and blend markers are what I would consider a gateway drug alcohol marker. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that, oh, you know what? I should have left a little highlight in their hooves. We'll go back and add one. I'll show you how to do that. I did it on the other ones. Okay. So what I mean by that 
is um, Stampin' Blends are great for brand new card makers. They're also great for simple, quick projects. Just want to get it done. Hurry quick, color quick. We'll do a horse with Stampin' Blend so you can see just quick, easy coloring, okay? In fact, let's just do one with Smoky Slate real quick. Um, actually, I'm going to use Gray Granite because Gray Granite is a warm gray and Smoky Slate is a cool gray. Okay, so... Um, I'm using, so on Stampin' Blends markers, I do opposite than Copics. I start with my darkest, go to my lightest, and back the other way. With Copics, I start with the lightest, go to the darkest, and back the other way for blending. Okay, so when you want to color something quick and easy, like this little horsey poo that I'm doing now, I'm using my dark gray granite. And I'm just going in and adding the dark gray. And then I'm going to take my light and just blend right over the top. And I'm done. So there's nothing wrong with using Stampin' Blends. There's nothing wrong with using Copics. But they are two totally different they're a horse of a different color. Ha 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 ha. Um, they are just totally different. You, you're using um, a whole different skill set, level set with the two. So I hope that answers those questions. Stampin' Blends are throwaway markers. There's no refills for them. They just get tossed. You buy new ones. They're cheap. They're $4.50 a piece or inexpensive. They're not cheap. They're inexpensive. So it's $9 for a light and a dark together, $4.50 a piece. With Copics, you could pay upwards of $12 for one marker, and then you have to buy the refill on top of it. Copic markers are an investment, and you have to learn how to use them to use them correctly. Unless you just bought like a single color and just colored, that's different. But if you want to be able to use them in the way that you see other people use them, it's a time investment. I have taken several classes learning how to use Copic markers. So, um, and I'm still, I mean, I'm very novice at it. It's not like I'm some pro by any means. Okay, so we're just gonna add him. So generally a gray horse kind of has just a white or gray mane and forelock. So we're just gonna go in and keep the gray granite going here and I'm going to do another layer over his little muzzle of dark gray granite to try to darken that up just even a little more then we're going to go in with light gray granite again and blend this out and we're leaving some white in the center for a highlight okay and then we're going to use just my little flirty flamingo light color here for his ears. And truth be told on this horse, his nose would probably be dark if he's a bay, which is kind of the color I colored him is like a bay color. So um, we're going to go in on his nose and just darken it up. His muzzle. I guess is what you would call it. So I used my C9, C7, and then we're gonna close it in with the C5, maybe. C7, where's my C5? Still in the bag, there we go. Cute, cute, cute. There's two horses down. Okay, let's see. I'm going to go back and read your comments. 
you're not the only one. I have watched several demos that use other products. I love that you chose to do what you love and incorporate both. Thank you, Shawnee. Doesn't bother me a bit, except you might be enabling me more. <laughs> Wendy might get a nasty letter from Stampin' Up! Demonstrators are only supposed to use. No, that's not true, Sue. Stampin' Up! Demonstrators are not supposed to only use Stampin' Up! stuff. So this is another thing I'm coming across is there's a lot of misconceptions out there um, about what is and isn't okay. Um, I, there's no way for me to say this without sounding pretentious or snotty, but I'm just going to say it because I don't know how else to explain it. So I am in the top 100 in the company as of last year um, with demonstrate as a demonstrator goes which by the way, as a disclaimer, I have to say also that less than 1% of the demonstrator base achieves that level with Stampin' Up. So I'm saying that because that's required for me to say by Stampin' Up's policies when I'm discussing this situation. Okay. So um, in Stampin' Up's demonstrator handbook, it specifically says that demonstrators are welcome to use any product that they would like outside of Stampin' Up. They simply cannot take money in uh, exchange for using that product. So, for example, Copic can't give me money for using Copic markers, okay, because we have a core product of Copic, of Stampin' Blend markers. So, they cannot offer me money and I cannot take money and I do not take money. I am not an affiliate with any other company. I do not earn money from anybody else except Stampin' Up and my YouTube, um, like, you know, views, like when you're, cause you're watching me on YouTube, I get money from YouTube. Um, I emailed Stampin' Up specifically before I made this change. I, I, emailed their compliance department specifically. I asked permission. I made sure that I was not violating any policies. Why? Because they watch me. That's just the truth of it. Because I have a strong following and because I do sell um, a decent amount of Stampin' Up! supplies, again, less than 1% with Stampin' Up! do that. That's my disclaimer. And I have to say that according to Stampin' Up! policy. Um, they watch me, they watch what I do. So I knew that, that using products that were not stamping up like Copic markers was going to cause a backlash. I also knew that there were going to be people that would say that it was against the rules. It is not, I am not doing anything against the rules. I, that's not how, who I am. I am an ethical person. I play within the rules and I'm doing nothing wrong. Um, is it advisable to use products that are non-Stampin' Up if you want to run a really strong Stampin' Up business? No, it is not. I do not advise it. Uh, I, When I started all of this, okay, and I don't mean Stampin' Up. I mean, when I started crafting, I did it because I loved crafting. I didn't start it to make money. It, I never in my wildest imagination ever thought that I would be able to make money by hanging out with my friends and making cards. I did not join Stampin' Up! to make money. Okay. So this also needs to be clear. Um, when I first started with Stampin' Up!, I <laughs> A lot of you know all this already, but I joined because I wanted a discount on the paper. That's why people join. Guys, if you're spending a bunch of money every month with Stampin' Up, join because then you're just going to get a discount. It doesn't have to be with me. Don't join with me if you don't like me or if you're like, whatever, I don't want to be part of your team. Fine. Don't join with me. Join with somebody though. Um, you are just shooting yourself in the foot. If you are purchasing regularly, large orders or small, and you're not part of somebody's team because you get a 20% discount on the product. So when I started with Stampin' Up, 
I just wanted a discount on the cardstock, period, the end. I wasn't even a stamper. Can you believe that? I didn't even, I had never stamped anything in my life. So I, I was a scrapbooker. I scrapbooked and I actually had another YouTube channel with a friend and it was called Two Chicks and a Cricket. And I actually have a couple people on my team that have been around since then. Um, and we used Cricut to make like elaborate scrapbook pages and we uploaded videos there. It was a shared YouTube page. So when I started, I just wanted a 20% discount on good cardstock and Stampin' Up! has high quality cardstock that is dyed all the way through. So I don't like white core cardstock. It bugs me. So anyway, I purchased the starter kit so that I could get the 20% discount on the cardstock. And I had the starter kit sitting like with all the catalogs and everything. It was sitting in my craft room for probably four or five months, something like that. And then I had friends over. It was a February of 2011. I had friend, or maybe January. I had friends over to stamp and make some cards with me because it was almost Valentine's. So we were making Valentine cards for our significant others. And I had never made a card. I think I'd made, well, I don't think that's true. I think at that point I had made like one or two cards, not a lot. So my friends came over. I made dinner. I can still remember. I made a spinach Korean salad that night and bread. And I had my friends over and we made Valentine's cards and I had catalogs and I had a few of them order stuff. And I only had like three ink pads. I only had, I mean, I didn't have very much at all. I had one stamp set. I had the hearts, heart, I heart, heart stamp set that came in the kit. Cause back in the day, you couldn't just like pick whatever you wanted to go in the starter kit. They gave you a specific starter kit. Uh, is this gray granite? This is, I need smoky slate. I put them away. So, um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, I use stamp and write markers and pencils. I'm not an alcohol marker fan. Oh, interesting. Jamie. Just trying to join and getting butter buffering signal. Hmm. I like the blends have more control in the lines. As you said, when you use other products, you don't get any sales money. You need to be happy though. If you want to keep going. Exactly. Oh, exact Francis words out of my mouth. So anyway, when I started, um, that's, how I started is it was just having friends over to stamp with me. And then Kathy, I am so happy you found me too. I just love you. And by the way, Kathy, thank you for my birthday gift. Kathy sent me a $25 gift card for my birthday. Can you believe that? She just always is sending me a little gift card for different gifts. Kathy, gosh, dang it, girl, you are the best. I'm saving it too, because I'm going out with my friends next weekend I don't know what we're doing besides having lunch, but maybe I'll find me a cute little spring top. And then I can say, Kathy bought me this cute little top. So um, anyway, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> oh, so I had these people over to stamp with me. And whilst they were hanging out, they wanted a catalog. I gave them a catalog. They purchased stuff. And at that time, I was super poor. And I made like $30 that night on people placing orders. And it kind of just triggered this little thing in my brain to go, you know, maybe I could make a little money doing this and still be home with my daughter. Because at that time, I wasn't working. She was about 18 months old-ish. And I guess she was more like, eh, she was probably, she, she was a little over two, actually. Like two, she had just turned two when I bought the starter kit. So 
anyway, that's it. That's my story. That's how I started this. I did not start this with the intention like, oh, I'm going to be this big top demonstrator. And I'm going to make all this money and I'm going to this, 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 this. No. And frankly, I mean, I don't, truth be told, I don't make tons of money. Um, and again, the disclaimer, less than two, less than 1% make any money, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm just putting that disclaimer out there over and over and over because I don't want my video to get flagged by stamping up and then I have to take it down because that would suck. So, um, so anyway, yeah, I never dreamed in a million freaking years that this would be my life, that I would make money doing this, that I would be able to stay home and not have to get a real job. Um, although sometimes I think I work more hours and harder doing this than I do <laughs> if I just went and punched a clock somewhere. Um, but at least I love it, right? So that's the difference. And the flexibility is worth its weight in gold, in my humble opinion. So all of that is to say, friends, 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 that somewhere along the way, I lost my joy. And I think you guys knew that, um, especially those of you that have been around here a long time. Um, I just felt like all I was ever doing was trying to make projects and do stuff to like sell product. And it just became, it, it became a job. It made me feel dreadful. So I thought I got to fix this. I got to fix this. I got to find a way to bring some of the joy back. And for me, um, like, for example, you know, people ask, well, you know, the Copics. Okay, I love coloring. And I truly, deeply, deeply love, like, learning how to be better at it. If Stampin' Up! offered every color there was imaginable, I wouldn't, I wouldn't need any other things. I wouldn't need any other, I wouldn't use Copics but they don't. And I don't expect them to. And I don't, it's okay to me. Like there is a beauty in us learning and growing and using and whatever with this industry. You know, I, I just, I view it very differently than other people. And yeah, I'm going to catch flack and I'm going to come under fire because it's not the popular thought process for somebody who is doing what I'm doing. But here's what I want to say to you. If you're out there and you're watching this video and you're a demonstrator, first, I want to tell you, I love you very much because you are part of something that I have grown with. Secondly, I want to tell you that if you are trying to build a thriving Stampin' Up! business, I highly do not recommend doing what I'm doing. <laughs> so if that is your goal, then I would not encourage you to use other products, particularly if you're hosting events and classes and stuff like that. So this is a case of do what I say, don't do what I do. Okay. Period. The end. If you're out there and you're watching and you're a naysayer and you just want to be nasty, go to another channel. My, me and my friends don't have time for that here. We're not even going to indulge in it. Okay. We're doing what we're doing. We're lit in our little corner of the world, having fun, hanging out, chit chatting. And that's just how it's going to be. That's just how it's going to be. So there it is. So if anybody's confused, I, and I know those of you who are like my good friends that have, that watch all my videos and you guys hang out with me all the time, you're like, oh my gosh, please stop talking about this. It's 
they're hearing it over and over and over because they're my friends and they hang out with me all the time. But friends, the, the deal is I'm still getting messaging, messages, comments, questions, emails, et cetera, et cetera. Private messages to my Facebook, uh, my personal Facebook, like lots of people concerned about what little Wendy's doing. Let me tell you all something. There is no, way bigger fish to fry. Go be worried about what else is happening in the world, not what Wendy's doing with our little crafty business. So, and I can promise you all this, if I'm doing something that I'm not supposed to be doing, Stampin' Up's going to be the first one to get on me. The first one. They don't miss nothing when it comes to if a demonstrator is doing something they're not supposed to be doing. So, anyway, that's that. That is enough about that. Frozen again. Guys, I, it's freezing because I'm losing, I'm almost out of power on my phone. That's what's happening. Girls and boys, we've almost, let me show you how to put this insert in. I can't believe I did not show you this. I'm horrible. Okay, so here's how you put this insert in. Okay, to put the insert in, you've got to glue, you're going to glue this, okay, so where it opens, you're going to fold it shut, you're going to place this in here like so, in the center, and you're going to glue just this one side, okay, there we go, glue. We're going to put glue just at the top of this piece over here. I can't believe I didn't show you this. What a ding dong. We just got busy talking and chatting and hanging out and time just escaped me. So I'm just kind of lining it up with like a quarter of an inch around the sides. And then we're just going to glue that down, but we're just gluing it on that one side. Okay. Hopefully I did this right. Then we're going to open it up and we're going to push this piece over to this side. Okay. And we're going to add glue to just this one side and we're just going to close that down. That's it. It's that simple. So you're opening towards the top and you're going to glue this one side down, other side down. Ah, uh, don't come loose. The glue is probably not quite dry yet. Yeah, it's not quite dry, but I just want to show you. Eh, see, opens up just like that. So I'm going to close this and put this on it so that it'll dry. And then these are all our panels that we just add. You know, Jean, the problem is I don't have a charger that reaches into the middle of my island where I do my crafting. That's the problem, sister. I wanted one, but for whatever reason, when we were building this space, it didn't happen. And... It's concrete floor, so I'm not sure how to do it now, but I need power into the middle where I craft. That really is the only solution. Okay, well, we've almost got this card finished. I told you guys it's long. I wasn't planning on coloring and doing all of this with you today, to be honest, but we just got to yakking and... Time got away from us, and here we are. So do you guys have any questions for me 
about anything. Horses. Oh, you know what is coming up? Paper party, new catalog, paper party, all that's going to be happening, y'all. So I do have a special email list that I just started for anybody who wants to be in my paper party retreats involved. Um, I will link that below the video when this is over. I'll go back and add the link for the paper party email sign up. Negative message or not worth your time. You got that right, sister. So stinking cute. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to use my light just to kind of blend these out a little. How do you guys feel about the pool party background? Should I have done it balmy blue? I'm kind of feeling like I should have. I wonder if I could color glaze it. Do you guys know what color glazing is? When you just glaze one color right over the other color? You can do that with Cop uh, Copics and Stampin' Blends. Alcohol markers you can do that with. Where's my C1? Here it is. I think I need to refill my C1, but I don't know if I have an ink refill for it. Yikes. I'm going to have to... I think that Macy's trainers are going to love these cards. So... I'm going to give them both these because they really have stuck with us through some hard stuff with losing her other horse. And then um, this awesome opportunity they've given us to, to learn and train this um, Mustang. I mean, what an incredible opportunity for a young lady. You know, um, not something, not something everybody would get. That's for sure. So then we're just gonna, I still need to color that horse. I don't, what color should I bank him? We've got a gray horse, a red horse. What color should I do my last horse? Thank you. Okay. I need to color this one. Got some glue on my table. And this one still needs to be added. I'm using Stampin' Sill Plus to add these because I do prefer it, to be totally honest, over any other adhesive. Other than the Tombow glue. I love Tombow glue. That Stampin' Up! sells. So that's it. That's the card. We just got to color this one last one. Why not like a Palomino? Oh, that's a good idea. Let's see. Let's pick out some Palomino colors. Um, we'll see. Oop. That's maybe. Maybe a little bit more brown. How about this one? Ooh, that's a good one. All right, so we've got 31. Oh, look at that. I have two of them. Huh. Okay. E31. Here's 34. Here's 33. So we're going to swatch these. Yeah, we'll go with this. Yeah, this is the lightest. So we start with our lightest. And we're going to color everything on this guy the same. Hopefully my phone lasts. So if all of a sudden we just hang up and you guys are like, where'd she go? It's because my phone died. So there's E31. Here's 33. Uh, 
Uh, this isn't quite Palomino color, but we tried. I would have to actually, um, you never criticize the products though. Oh, are you talking about Stampin' Up! products, Bev? No, I don't because I love them. That's the thing that's funny to me about all of this. Just because you, just because you say you like one thing doesn't mean you don't like something else. Two things can be true at the same time, my friends, right? Like, you can love Stampin' Up! product and you can also love other product. It's possible, friends. So we're going back to the 33 here. I think a Palomino color would have been a little more on the yellow side. But that's okay. That's okay. We're going to go with the lightest for his little muzzle. And then let's see. What's this color look like? Once in a lifetime opportunity. You must be referring to our Mustang challenge. Yes, it is, sister. You are not kidding, Jeannie. It is once in a lifetime. There's like... I mean, what in the world? I, truthfully, it could open a huge door for my daughter, too, if it's something she ends up loving. Um, you know, who's to say that she won't get another one at some point? Okay, E23. <sighs> Do I have another E20 something? What is this one? Oh, I don't think I do. So let's try, that's not, uh, these are just kind of a caramel, caramel colors. I could have done better with the pal Palomino picking, but you know, it, we've been here a long time and I'm afraid my phone's going to die, y'all. Okay. And then we're just going to do, let's see, what's this one? Nope. That's a hard no. No. Ow. Now I'm just like randomly guessing and pinching my fingers and things. There we go. Okay. Oh, crud. Cry minutely, Chuck. I didn't color his mane. I'm panicking because I don't want my phone to die. Uh, unfortunately, there's a bunch of nosy Nellies. I know. Um, Jamie says, you also give us your honest opinion on products and why. You understand that we all have different likes. Yes, I try to do that. That is true. All right, we're going to use this little E04 for his ears. Insides of his ears. Give it a little pinky tone. All right. We did it. We did it, friends. We made it through the entire video and project. And we did it. There it is. Look at that. How fun. I hope you make one. I hope you make a card like this. And don't forget what I said about the colors retiring and all that. Um, and go over to my blog to get your measurements and stuff like that. Make sure you do that. And if you like this stamp set, you can purchase it from me. It's linked over there. So yay, fun. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And I will talk to you again very, very soon. Have an Awesome week. Bye-bye.